G'day guys, Matty Graham here from Exponential Performance Coaching. Today I just want to ask, answer a question that sort of follows on from last week's video quite nicely about how to test your VO2 max and anaerobic threshold. It's all very well knowing what these terms mean from the last video, but how do we then test them, know what our personal values are, and then how do we incorporate them into our training. So when it comes to testing your VO2 max, the best way to do that is in the lab. You go into the lab, you jump on a bike or a treadmill or a rowing machine, depending on what your sport is. You've got a mask on, and what they'll do is they'll ramp you through a protocol that gets harder and harder and harder, usually short blocks. And as you ramp up, they're going to measure the, how much oxygen your body is consuming. When that consumption gets to its peak and plateaus, that's your VO2 max. Now, as we mentioned uh, in last week's video, Knowing your VO2 max is not really that helpful in terms of training. It always gets measured in research because we always want to categorize the participants we're using, but when it comes to real everyday usefulness and training, it's not that useful. You can indirectly measure your VO2 max through uh, the test like the beep test. The beep test is based on a field test and then whatever result you get in the field test, it gives you an estimation of your VO2 max. But again, it's not that sort of useful. So that's VO2 max. In a nutshell, I'm just going to push it to the side and move on to anaerobic threshold because that's the one that's kind of most useful for you guys. So anaerobic threshold, again, it can be tested in the lab or out in the field. So I'll talk you guys through the lab test first. And we sort of drew this graph last time. If we've got an increase in work rate along the bottom here, whether it be speed on a treadmill or wattage on a bike, as your intensity increases, so does lactate. And we get a lactate curve. So what would happen is each one of these blocks may be four minutes long is usually a good um, sort of standard. So each one of these are four minutes long. And at the end of every four minutes, there's a small blood sample taken either from your finger or from your earlobe and analyze for blood lactate. At the same time, we also measure heart rate. If you're going to be using a heart rate monitor, and heart rate usually increases like this. And the point that we're looking for, remember, is this point here, where lactate or blood lactate starts increasing exponentially to fatigue. This is your anaerobic threshold. So we can either say it's this speed or this power. So if you're a runner, you know that this pace is around about your anaerobic threshold. Or if you're on the bike, you know that this power is about your anaerobic threshold. Or if you've used a heart rate monitor, you can say this heart rate here is approximately your anaerobic threshold. So that when you go out and train, you can say you can match this pace or this um, or there's power on the bike, or you can hit a specific heart rate to know that you're in the anaerobic threshold area. Now, the other way we can test is out in, in the field, do a field test. Now, there's a really good field testing guidelines out there um, developed for the bike using power by Andy Coggan. Um, he's the big power guru around that's come up with a lot of tests, and the field test is pretty simple. On a bike, you ride as hard as you can for 20 minutes. And the sort of power that you produce over that 20 minute period is very close to what you would get in the lab at this point. So usually what you do is you take the power that you, or heart rate, if you're only using heart rate, that you sustain for that 20 minute time period, you're minus 5% off it because this here is what you can usually sustain for about an hour so usually if you do 20 minute results, it's about 5% less than your one hour result. And then you take that heart rate or power, and the easiest thing to do is jump over to training peaks, log in, go to zones, and there's a whole bunch of different methods that you can use to calculate your zones. But what I'd suggest is you uh, use Andy Coggins' uh, five zone method. You put in your threshold power, your functional threshold power or heart rate, and it will automatically calculate your training zones for you. So what you'll end up having is zone 1 down this way, zone 2, zone 3 somewhere in here, 
zone 4 and then it'll give you a zone 5. So the, the predictions that this calculation are giving you are based off this sort of a lab test. The great thing about a lab test is it's very specific, it's very controlled. There's no wind, there's no road surfaces changing what's happening. The only negative thing about it is because, because you're in a lab, that can change how you respond to things. And because it's not actually out in the environment, it can change things a little bit as well. The great thing about the field test is you're out doing that exact discipline. However, you can get road conditions, wind, that sort of thing, traffic, influencing the result. So field test versus lab test. I have done a lot of these in the past, a lot, and as a coach it's very useful to see. The thing that it's most useful for is for seeing improvements. So if you know that someone's anaerobic threshold moved from here to here, so they're going faster or producing more power, you know that they're improving. It's, it's harder to see this in a field test because the results don't tend to be as big. Whereas if you've got the graph, you can definitely see it. I, I use the field test now more and more and more just because it's easier usually for athletes to do. It doesn't cost. This test here costs upwards of $120 to do every time you do it. Whereas a lab test is completely free. With the advances in power technology and heart rate and GPS, it's a lot easier to send your athlete away, let them do the test, and then send them the data back to you. So the, the key thing is, once we know what our anaerobic threshold is, is to use it to, one, calculate our training zones, but also, two, to monitor our improvements. So whatever method that you use, it's really important that you go out and test it. Because if you don't test it, you don't know if it's improving. Now, we've talked mainly about the bike here. Running, you can do the same sort of a field test. I like to use a 5K time trial as the running field test. This works well for most multi-sport and intermediate to beginner runners. For more advanced runners, the 5K, because the intensity that they're able to maintain over that is a lot higher than an intermediate to a uh, beginner runner and a lot of multi-sport athletes it, it doesn't quite hold true so 5k time trial for most people works really well in the kayak again something that lasts between 20 minutes potentially up to 60 minutes so in the boat a, a 5 to 10k time trial can be a really good measure you take that heart rate and then use those equations and that will give you your estimated anaerobic threshold. So remember, when we're doing the field tests, the heart rate, the power, or the pace, or all of these things, if you've got all of them, the average, the average heart rate for the 20 minute time period or for the field test, depending on how long it's going to be, is an estimation of this of your anaerobic threshold. It's an estimation of your anaerobic threshold. You then take that number, put it into those equations, you'll get your training zones out of it. So there you have it. A little bit about how to test VO2 max, not that important, but more importantly anaerobic threshold. What the results are sort of important for and how to actually use them. And next, In the next video I'm going to cover training how to target VO2 max and anaerobic threshold. If you've got any questions, keep them coming in. I'll keep giving you the answers so you can train smarter and harder.